Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is a biggie. We are talking about the grip. Now I did start a grip series way back when uh, I really first started this YouTube channel. And I did a couple of videos, make sure you check those two out. But today I'm actually gonna give you a bit more substance to how you actually place your hands on the golf club. Huge, huge influence on your golf. <clears throat> I would say this is as influential on your golf as the diet and the amount of water and the food you eat has an impact on your life. If you do not grip the club appropriately, in my opinion, the game, I almost go as far as to say it's impossible to achieve the goals that you believe you can achieve because I don't believe there's any golfer that doesn't think that he can do well at this game because we've all hit the golf ball out the middle of the face. And the minute you hit one out the middle of the face that has a bit of energy on it, you immediately feel like you can play the game and you've got some potential. So today is a hugely big day in the world of YouTube videos and my channel. I'm gonna to talk to start with about the two grips. The two grips that either hang out on the weak side or the strong side. Now, back in the day when David Ledberg was out there pushing and promoting Nick Faldo and the coaching and the, and the sort of Hogan philosophy of thumb bet down the middle of the grip, it's still with us. Thumb down the middle of the grip is something that I encounter every single day. Thumb should not be down the middle of the golf club. We will come on to that. Because of where the thumb sits on the right hand, invariably people would then cover the left thumb with their right hand and the either interlock, overlap or 10 finger grip, they are the three variables that would then sit aside those. And I'll just bring that over to this camera here. So we've got the interlock, the overlap, and we've got the 10 finger baseball grip. They are the three different attachments or one that is an attachment of putting the two hands together on the golf club. First of all, I'm gonna hit some shots with the weak hold. So that's gonna show you thumb down the middle, very few in the way of the knuckles on the left hand, and the right hand, whether you interlock, overlap, or 10 finger it, that right hand is then gonna sit and cover that left thumb. This incidentally might be slightly longer than my usual 10 minute video, but I think it's really worth it. Up on the screen, and I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger, I've got my face to path value. My face to path value is whether my ball will bend to the right or my face to path value will make the ball bend to the left. Whether the face is open to the path or whether the face is closed to the path or whether the face is square to the path. Face square to the path, rarely happens. Of course you can do it, but it's very difficult. You are always going to have to live with either a bend left or a bend right. The attack angle, interestingly, is a very much an intrinsic ingredient that links itself with how you hold the golf club. And again, I'll talk about a bit more about that in a moment. So first up, thumb down the middle, I'm an interlocker, and then I'm gonna cover the left hand thumb. I'm gonna swing the golf club, and what you'll tend to see is the golf ball hang itself out to the right of the target. Trap man disconnected. I'm just gonna connect it back up. I'll be back in two seconds. That will back up my running. <laughs> so, left thumb down the middle, right hand on top, and now I'm gonna hit one. Now what you'll tend to see is a golf ball that drifts out to the right. So face to path is open, so you can see that ball has a little bit of left to right bend on it. Again, left thumb down the middle, right hand on top. And depending how severe either of those hands are, you will tend to see more and more bend to the right. The left hand could be weak, the right hand could be strong. The right hand would sit underneath. You could get away with that because the right hand is offsetting the left hand, but invariably we want both hands talking together. Now we've got the grip where the left hand 
is strong, where we show more knuckles, and it's not just as simple as showing more knuckles. Again, we're gonna talk about that a bit more. And then the right hand is now gonna sit underneath. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a shot. And now all of a sudden, we see a face to path value that is now on the negative side. And depending on how strong that grip is, depending on how much it's underneath and around to the right, of course, this is all for right hand golfers, the more we'll see the golf ball bend away to the left. Therefore, the grip is hugely influential on making the club face either point to the left of the path or the right of the path. Now I'm gonna go back to the weak grip and we can have a weak grip in a couple of ways. The simple rotations on the grip in terms of where the hand sits, but also where it sits across our hands. I could have a golf grip that shows you loads of knuckles, but because it sits through the palm of the hand, and I'll just show that closer onto the camera, through the palm of the hand, that grip, even though it looks super strong face on, when I come to swing that golf club at the top of my back swing, this is really weak through the palm. And what you'll tend to see is a really flexed wrist angle with guys and girls that have a strong grip or look strong, but is actually weak. The outcome of that type of grip usually is you'll get someone at the top of their backswing with a bit of a flex, um, extended left wrist, and the face of the golf club will point to the sky. And then what they'll tend to do is they'll tend to hit them away to the left. The remedy for that is making sure that the club is not sitting across the palm, it's sitting more in the fingers of the left hand. What that will actually do is change the, the golfer from being flexed to more extended. So the wrist angle will adopt itself and change itself depending on where you put the club through the left hand. So putting it in the fingers is a hugely big player. So more in the fingers of the grip, come to the camera, more in the fingers of the grip, hand over, which now produces a very different style of strong looking left hand which is a really big ingredient when you're thinking about how you want to apply your grip on the golf club. So the left hand, for me, is a massive influence on making the club either strong in your grip or weak in your grip. It's not just show me all the knuckles or not show me any knuckles. With the left hand, it must be in the fingers. What this also then creates is the pad of the left hand as the pressure point on the golf club. The pad of the left hand, this point here, is really, really important. This part here is really important to sit on the top of the golf club. More like so, rather than sitting through the palm. Now the club is very much in my fingers and what you actually now look down on is, is much more of a crease in here, rather than no crease. So I'll make it strong. You can now see that that grip looks strong from a left-hand point of view, and actually the left wrist and the left forearm look like they almost line up, not in the same way as this crease here. That contact patch there in the palm, that contact patch through the grip, left hand, massively important. When you've then got yourself into a position where you can grip it more in your fingers and you've got the pad of that left hand, if you've watched some of my videos and it was um, no more chicken wing, I talked about the pressure down through the handle and moving the golf club around. Well, that pressure point on the pad of my left hand is the force that I use for my left shoulder it makes the golf club swing around me. As opposed to the palm of the hand, I can't support that. 
the left hand is the all important hand for me. Once you get this right, the right hand is like the salt and the pepper, the garlic. The, the, the part of the grip that is to taste. So I'm now going to pop my left hand on in this orientation. And then I'm going to make a golf swing with my right hand underneath. So my right hand's now going to sit more underneath and into the palm of the right hand. Now when I make a back swing, the through swing, all of a sudden the golf ball goes down the left. Again, I'm just making swings here. I'm not trying to control anything. It's just falling out how it wants to. Put my left hand back on, and this time I'm going to put it more into the fingers. So it's now sitting more in the tips of the fingers. And this interlock or overlap is very much at the end of the pinky finger, rather than everyone always wants to jam the right hand in. Pinky finger over the top. And now the V of the right hand points more up to the chin and it offsets a little bit of the strength in the right hand. So now when I come to hit one, now I can feel that the length, the length of the strength, should I say, of the left hand is there, but the right hand has now neutralized that. <coughs> so the grip of the left hand very much in the fingers, the pad of the left hand very much on top because we're going to use that as force and pressure down through the butt of the golf club to stabilise it. And then the right hand in the fingers is very much like the, the, the hold that you take with the, the, with the biro or the pen when you're signing your name. You wouldn't grasp it in your palm and sign it like you would on a chalkboard. You'd use the fingers. So the line share of the work is done by the left hand and the placement and the right hand is very much the one that's just going to balance the two out. Now the pressure's through the hands. Where should they be? Well, not all of these fingers are on the golf club, uh, and they all have a different role. For me, the last three fingers of your left hand are key components. The those last three fingers are either grabbers or releasers. The harder you grab on those last three fingers, the more it will lock the forearm up, and the more it will pull the left thumb into the golf club. Those last three fingers really want to feel like they're as light as possible. Now, if you've got yourself a decent grip and your, the pad of the left hand is on the golf club, you can see I've got all three of those last three fingers off the golf club and I can still make a backswing because I can use the pad of that hand to actually pivot the golf club up. So I now put the pressure down through the, the pad of my left hand and you can see how that golf club now wants to pressure up. The handle works in, the head's over here that pressure and force on the paddle left hand really pivots the golf club away. A backswing that many people would like to see in themselves. The left three fingers, the last three fingers of the left hand, huge. The right hand, really it's the middle two. The middle two are the contact patch that's pulling the pad of your right hand into the left thumb. And this forefinger and, um, uh, and thumb are very much light on the golf club. So I've got last three fingers, and I've got the middle two fingers, last three fingers of my left hand, and the middle two fingers of my right hand are the key players. The forefinger of the left hand and the little finger of the right hand, light, thumb of the right hand, forefinger of the right hand are light also. The left thumb is also an interesting ingredient, long or short. Short will give you more stability at the top. Someone that has a bit of an overswing, that might be something you want to look at. Someone that's looking a little bit more, looking for more lag and load in your golf swing, you might want to look at a longer thumb. These grips will either make your club face look more left or make your club face look more right. If you are someone that is hanging out on the light side of life, the weaker of the grips, what will tend to happen is your face will arrive more open. What you'll tend to do is try to swing the golf club more at the bottom in order to square the face up. So for those types of people, you tend to see a fade and you tend to see no angle of attack. So there's the fade and there's the no angle of attack. The guys and girls that grip it stronger, more hook face golfers, you'll tend to see steeper angle of attacks and more draw because that grip can substantiate an angle of attack and hitting the golf ball straight. 
I've just adapted my attack angle because I could feel where the face was going to try to point when I came into strike. Weak grip, open face, light angle of attack, ball goes out to the right. Don't work on angle of attack, work on your grip. <laughs> Hook face players, strong grippers, ball goes left, try to hit down, fend off the left hand side of the golf, club, uh, golf course, gives you a, a stronger angle of attack, it stops, tries to stop the ball going left. Therefore grip is absolutely top of the pile before you even do anything else. So please, please, please watch this over. There's more to talk about on this, but I've already been going for 15 odd minutes and I don't want to bore you to death <laughs> with my chat. But hopefully that's been insightful and there's plenty for you to get your teeth stuck into. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below. Hope you're enjoying the channel. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do hit the like button, share and subscribe with your friends and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.